Joe, it's been fascinating speaking with you and I'm just keeping an eye on the time and it just zips by so quickly. And just before we wrap up, I'm just wondering if you could just share a couple of pieces of advice for maybe somebody who's in that growth phase and they're not so deeply entrenched in their business that they thinking, oh, I couldn't possibly change. What could somebody who's in the growth phase do that's quite logical and sensible that would prepare them for either increased growth or they could sell their business? The thing that's top of mind and is a surprise to some of my clients, that you get to a certain point where your margin isn't that important. Don't get me wrong, it's still very important. But when consulting firms of values, typically, and this won't be a surprise to anyone that's looked into this, you've got your margin and then you've got a multiple on your margin. So let's say your margin is 20%, which is the minimum you want for a sale, and your multiple is seven, which is average for a boutique consulting firm that's selling. Now, you could really hammer things and push that margin up to 23, 24%. If you really hammer the workers, if you really do the pipeline stuff, if you focus on high margin content, and perhaps that's stuff that you might want to do in the final year, but it's more profitable to spend a little bit of time thinking about what can we do to increase the multiple. And the multiple is a function of everything else other than margin. So it's having the right leadership team. It's having systems and processes in place. It's having that professional service automation software in place so that data is just there at your fingertips. It's having founders that have moved away from the sales position. Um, It's potentially having a founder who's now got a CEO in place. So all of those types of things can push your multiple and also being in the right niche. Obviously, if you're in data analytics or cybersecurity or AI consultancy, you're going to get a multiple of 10, 11, 12. So it's making sure you're doing the right stuff in the right way. So perhaps in the two years coming up to sale, you might focus more on what can we do to improve our multiple rather than squeezing out an extra percentage point or two in terms of margin. I think that's really interesting. I hadn't heard it described that way before. I have one last question for you, and it's maybe a little bit of a twist on what we've been talking about. I've seen a number of businesses and business owners just over the last little while get to the place where they're going, I've had enough, I'm done, I'm retiring. And instead of trying to sell their business, they walk away. What advice would you give to somebody who says, I want to walk away? Would you say fine? Or would you say, hang on, wait, have you thought about selling? That's a really good question. So there's two things. One, I'd say 30% of the conversations I have with new people, they're founders who come to me and say, I'm ready to retire. I'd like to sell next year. I'm making 20% margin and growth has been good. And I look at the company and it's unsellable. And to get it into a sellable position, You need to do all that, the systems, the leadership and the roles and all of that standard stuff, because it's all about them. And as soon as they disappear, there's no company. So it's a common problem. And that company is unsellable. So then they've got a choice either to go away and spend two to three years making a company as opposed to making a successful and famous founder who's connected or they walk away from it. So that's the first thing. The second thing is in terms if you can't spend two to three years turning it into an asset, then you think about succession management. And so you find someone who can take the business on, ideally buy you out over time, and you retain a small percentage of shares so that if they sell it down the line. Now, that is the less optimal approach, simply because the data shows that's less successful. So when a founder goes, even if you've got someone who's coming on board to take it on, Sales tend to dip, margin tends to dip, and company failure rates tend to go up for fairly obvious reasons. Um, So really, the ideal answer is to anticipate you leaving in two or three years and turn your company into an asset. Think, well, when I walk away, what's this company worth? And very often, the answer is zero. So you want to make sure that answer changes.